let me dive into long form. So this is our new setup. What we're doing now is we're doing one long form content recording. So let's just say we're recording an episode today, a mortgage specific topic, like uh, four first time home buyer tips to buy in 2024. We're going to record that. We're going to video that it's going to be a solo episode. So the cool thing is you can do a mix of solo episodes and guest episodes. I highly recommend doing both. The reason why I recommend doing solo episodes is because you can get your point across a lot easier and quicker, and you're establishing more of that trust and um, that relationship with the audience because they're hearing you more versus the guests. So you definitely have to sprinkle in both. So let's just say you record that, you do a video podcast, you post that on podcast uh, platforms, so all of them, and there's apps to do this where you just literally load it in and it uploads it to all of them. Then you upload it to YouTube, create a thumbnail for it. Then the cool part is like I mentioned before, I thought of the name Opus, Opus Clips, Opus Pro is the platform where you can toss the video in. It's going to cut up the content for you. And then you can use that and repurpose it and repost it to all of the short form content platforms out there. So that's our flow right now. What we will do in the future is we're going to do more purpose built videos where we're doing sit down talking head videos. And then that way we can post on a short form platforms as well. So that's for the future. But as of right now, we're getting about two to four short form clips per episode. So we're getting quite a bit, like we're almost posting a post per day. So pros, we, um, it's not as saturated. Like I mentioned before, at the start of this video, if you look at YouTube, if you look at podcasts, I would say there's more mortgage brokers on podcasts versus YouTube, but you'll, you'll see there's a lot of old ones where they stopped after. 10 episodes. The key to long form is consistency. And that's why it's not as saturated because it's, it's harder to pop off right away. But I promise you, you will see results after a while. Like it's only been about, I'd say six months for us consistently on the consumer facing podcast. And we're already seeing leads coming in through that, which is super cool to see, which we didn't expect. So it's not as saturated. Uh, you kind of play in your own pool there can stand out from the rest with your own niche. Um, so what we do, it's a bit different. Like what I would recommend doing, if, if you're going to create your own niche, I would recommend keeping it mortgage specific, but related to something, maybe it's like real estate investing or mortgages for entrepreneurs or something like that. I would make it mortgage specific to start out with. And then you can expand into more of like a broader niche as you have more followers and fan base. For us, we started more broad. Um, we toyed with the idea of niching down further, but we're going to keep it with the same theme that we have now because we enjoy doing it. So what ours is, is um, the invested entrepreneur is helping Canadians seek financial independence. Um, so we talk about real estate, traditional investing, building businesses, anything related to entrepreneurship we talk about. So these are, we have guests come on that are, that have excelled in all of these different fields. So it's great. It'll just take longer to build a following in my opinion, versus like, if you had it super niche down, it's going to be easier for someone to follow and subscribe and tune into your podcast because it's like, it's talking to them. It's like, man, this podcast is for me. Um, so I would recommend doing that and then broaden out as you go on easier to stay consistent. So like I said before, like if you're scheduling guests to come on the show too, like it's going to hold you accountable. So you're not going to skip out on that. Uh, first of all, and then you're going to be consistent with your short form because you have Opus Pro where you can just toss in the video and get clips from it. So like, there's no excuses anymore. Uh, you have the power of AI, you have um, all of these different apps to make it easier for you. Um, so in my opinion, it, there's no excuses and we're running two podcasts and a, a fairly busy book of business as well. So it can be done. It's just like, you just got to stay consistent with it. I'll touch a bit on this. Like I have a video right now that is 10 K views. So the video has 10,000 views. Now I posted that two to two and a half years ago. It's like a four minute video. I absolutely hate it, but it still gets views every single day, roughly 40 to 60 views a day. And it's nuts. Like it's just sitting there living and breathing. I get subscribers from it. It's just really cool to see some videos pop off. So so far down the line, uh, you just don't know which one it's going to be or when. So I just think that's really cool. That's YouTube specific. Uh, so the con is, uh, like I mentioned, it's a longer growth cycle. You have strategies to supercharge that though, like uh, guesting on other podcasts. It's intimidating at first. There's more steps involved for setup for sure. Like you got to think about lighting, camera, audio, flow, like the workflow of how you're going to do it. But if you're going to do short form content, you kind of have the same things already. Like you're probably already going to have 
something for audio, lighting, and camera. So if you're already doing short form, there's not many more steps to involved to getting set up. It can be more costly. Like you can go as expensive as you want to on this. I think we're still under about 2,500 a month. So we're not spending too much money on it. And that's, uh, you can go as expensive as you want. Like you can hire an agency and run it for like five to 10 K a month, or you can just literally do it for like $0 a month and, uh, just post like no editing, whatever, just get it up there, which you can do too. Um, so you can make it as cheap as you want, but reasonably you can get this done for under 500 a month. If you're just going to get the edited podcast version and just upload it to YouTube, like you can get that done in under 500 bucks a month.